Welcome back. We're going through uh, <clears throat> Chapter 5, BS 120. <clears throat> so we talked about the norm disk for the normal distribution. That's where the norm disk is used where we know the value of x or an assumed value of x, like we did the example. We know 900, uh, the previous example. You know, we might know 900. Uh, we know the mean, we know the standard deviation. What we're trying to figure out is what is the probability of that event x. So we have an assumed x, we have a mean, a standard deviation, and we're trying to figure out what's the probability or, or either the cumulative probability or the exact probability, lots of different ways we can do it. Uh, norm INV is a tool to use when we know the probability level we like. Like let's say we, rather than saying, where does 900 fall on the curve? What if we said, what number is 95th percentile or 95% along the way? Or down here, at what values exceed at most 10% of the time? When are we more than 10% of the time? So if we know the mean is 750 and the standard deviation is under, and we want to find out at what number is 10% of the time is it greater than, okay? So let's, we could do our norm INV and we'd say the probability, now remember the cumulative probability is one minus 0.1, right? Or we could have put in 0.90 in there because we want the probability from left to right, right? So the probability that it's on the far right side of the curve is gonna be one minus our 10%, uh, which is 0.9. Our mean is 0.75 and our standard deviation is 100. So we just said, okay. So the number is at 878 and higher happens 10% of the time. So norm disk is how you calculate uh, the probability of a, a given X. Norm I and V is where you know the probability or you've assumed a probability and you want to decide the X. So let's say uh, I want to know what are what's the 40th percentile. So what values, at what value is it 40%? Uh, so I could come up here and I could go uh, norm I and V and find it and say the probability. 0.4, the mean we said was 750, the standard deviation is 100. So this will give us a value where 40% of the time it's this number or less. Because remember our cumulative curve goes from uh, left to right. So it's 724. So 40% of the time it's 724 or less, which makes sense because our mean 750. So that's norm disk in norm INV. Now, let's talk a little bit about example 5.33. Nothing says we have to have a normal distribution. There's not all, we've talked about Poisson distributions, binomial distributions. We could have an example where we have an exponential distribution. So here are critical components fail at a rate of one every hour. What is the probability that it will fail in the first 5,000 hours. Now, here is from our worksheets, the exp uh, exponential distribution. It gave us the mean and it gave us the lambda. And what we were able to do is simply plot this exponential function. And we can look right here and say, we can look up on our frequency distribution table and see that 46% of the time, or the, the probability of my engine failing in the first 5,000 hours is 46 percent and this obviously has implications uh, for you know testing for warranty products all sorts of potentials but the main point of this is just to see we could have lots of different distributions um, let's talk about sampling dice now example 5.34 so, and this is how we can create a probability distribution from a discrete uh, numbers. So, we know the probabilities go from 0 to 1 or 0 to 
we can create this probability distribution because once again we know the probability of this event is 1 in 36 and we can do a cumulative which just adds them all up now let's say we said you know what let's take a hundred samples and let's get a random number so the way you can do a random number in Excel is you just say the function R-A-N-D and it'll give you a random number between 0 and 1. Now, notice it gives me a whole new set. Now what I did over here in an outcome is I made a very off my cumulative probability. I'm going to say, you know, if it's less than 0.83, which you notice is the uh, 0.028, I'm going to give it a value of 2. If it's less than now, that, remember, the if statements, it's going to apply that first, then it's going to apply this. So if this number, this random number, is less than or equal to 0 0.028, I'm going to call that the roll of a dice of 2. If not, I'm going to put another if statement is. This is an embedded if statement. If it's less than or equal to 0 0.083, I'm going to give it a value of 3, and so on. So what we've done here is we've given all of these values, and it gives us an outcome based on where our random number comes. So what we've basically done is we've randomly rolled a dice with the computer by using a random number generator. We've created our own sample. Now, I can now take these 100 distributions and I can do a frequency distribution histogram very easily and I can plot my results. Looks beginning to look like a bell-shaped curve. Not exactly, but notice 7 is the most frequent. Got 18, kind of an anomaly here. I got 8 threes, but I randomly did 100. Down here, we randomly did... Um, a little more than a thousand. So let's see what that curve begins to look like. Notice that this curve, when I do a thousand ninety-five, now I'm really beginning to look like a bell-shaped curve. Is these are becoming more and more distributed. Now uh, we could continue to do this to randomly do ten thousand. And as you might expect, the more and more random uh, number of trials I do, the more and more this begins this dice will begin to form a very distribution of what we would expect. But it creates a continuous distribution. So we can uh, begin to draw lots of inferences from this information. So now you know how to take a random number to, our, to a cumulative distribution. Um, any questions, let me know.